Welcome to another episode of Life's a VK Podcast, a weekly podcast series that focuses on living a life without limitations. I'm your host, Cha Jones. Today, I'll be talking to you about basketball dreams, creating your dream unconventionally with my special guest, Raphael Barlow. Mr. Raphael Barlow is the founder of NBA Draft Junkie. He has been to over 22 countries and has worked on basketball-related projects on five of the seven continents. In the last 12 years, he has created his own lane as a videographer, skill trainer, and basketball scout. Recently married and already a father-to-be, I want to welcome to Life's of AK, Mr. Raphael Barlow. Welcome and thank you for joining me. How are you? I'm doing good. How how are you? It's it's been a while. It's, it's funny. Been, it, we're talking on the podcast, <laughs> but we haven't talked to each other outside of messages on social media in a while. So I know that's sad. That's sad. But you are doing some amazing things, and I wanted to make sure that I got you for my new podcast, Life's a VK, um, because I watch you through social media, um, mm-hmm. and I'm really proud of you doing all that you're doing. Thank um, you. Yes, you know, 22 countries. Let's start yeah. there. Um, mm-hmm. So what inspired you to travel? As a kid, I always liked geography. It was just something that about geography that was interesting to me, like different cultures. I was the kid in school that remembered like the capital of different countries. I remember the capital of all the states. Um, yeah, just just had an interest. I mean, sports is always something I was interested in. So when I used to look up different athletes, they would be like from... I don't know, let's say like Michael Jordan. I know he's from Wilmington, North Carolina. So I I always wanted to know like, okay, where is Wilmington, North Carolina on the map? And just looking at like baseball cards and football cards and all of that, I just love United States geography. And then when I used to collect baseball cards, um, you know, I would notice that like the players looked black, but they were Dominican. And so as a kid from Omaha, Nebraska, where there's not a lot of diversity, seeing a guy that looks like me but he doesn't speak a lick of English was really, really weird to me. So that was when I started noticing like, okay, so there are Cubans that look like me, but then there are Cubans that are, they look more um, Hispanic. Yeah. Yeah. So that really like caught my attention. And then as far as like the world, um, I went on, on one trip to China and, and after that, I was just like, okay, I, I got to see this world. I got to see what's all out here. So it's kind of a long-winded answer, but that's how I got started. So what got you to go to China? How'd you get there? So um, I was working in basketball. That's kind of like my field. And um, one day there was a, a guy that was putting together a team to go on a tour of China. So in, in China, they love basketball. And I mean, it can be a team of me, you, my two brothers and somebody else <laughs> say we're Americans. There's ways that pe- you can make money. Like people will come and just watch Americans play basketball, especially in like the remote parts of China where they haven't seen any other, you know, cultures or anything like that. It's a big deal. So my dad had always traveled and my mom did too. My dad used to always tell me and, and people at, at his church that you need to get a passport. You need to see this world. But even though I, I like geography, I was thinking I was probably like most people in their mindset, like, oh, wow, Paris is so far away. It's not attainable. So one day I was, you know, filming some stuff for this basketball team. And the guy that put the team together was like, hey, you want to go to China next week? And he's like, all expenses paid. You don't have to do anything, but maybe you can come film for us and create some content. And I was like, man, I don't have a passport. And he said, well, if you want to do anything in this basketball world, you need to have a passport. And he's like, even without it, you should always have a passport. You never know what type of opportunity comes up. He's like, this is a free trip for three weeks. And, you know, make sure you have a passport. 
So a year later, he reaches out to me and it's like, hey, this opportunity comes up again. You got your passport. And I still didn't have one, but I had enough time to go get one. And I used to like, did not like flying. I mean, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and maybe, maybe your situation is different growing up, but I felt like everybody in Omaha just drove, right? So like, if people wanted to go to like Dallas, okay, I'll drive 10 hours. Like, I just did not fly anywhere. I just drove everywhere. I mean, this is like my early, you know, early twenties because I went to school in Mississippi. So I kind of got used to like the 14 hour drive. So driving wasn't a big deal to me. When my friends moved across the country, they would ask me to help them drive. So I used to think like, man, I, I, I like driving cause I can get out and stop, but flying on a long flight. No, I don't like that. So I was kind of scared that I would get restless on this long flight. And then once I had that long flight to China and I survived, I was like, oh, man, I can do this. It don't get much further than Dallas to China. So I was like, everything else is going to be a piece of cake. And then after after that trip, it's, it's been on since then. OK, you said a whole lot. I, too, <laughs> for all the listeners, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, born and raised, um, which is where I know you from. <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> And wow, I never even thought about people living in Nebraska and driving, but it makes sense. You're right in the middle of the country. You have access to pretty much wherever you want to go. Chicago, you can get there in six, seven hours. You know, you can get to Denver in what, I don't know, eight, seven, six, I don't know. And then you can you can get to Dallas in like 14, 12, 14, depends on how you know fast you're driving. But I too drove, and that, that's why I've been to I've been to 43 of the 50 states and 20 countries. And um, I don't know, but I had never I had never gone abroad till I moved to Korea, which was quite interesting. Um, but I find it interesting um, because I had my passport like five years prior to me ever using my passport um but I definitely after I got to Korea I was like and but I always knew even as a child like I used to sit in elementary school and I went to school right by the airport and I would see planes taking off and I was like yo and I would just imagine where are they going so then I started flying on like magic <laughs> why am I telling people this but magic carpets and just imagining where that carpet was going to lead. So you've been to 22 countries. I think You're, it might be more than that. I don't that's, know. That's <laughs> high. I mean, because for most people, they only go within the 10 miles of where they live. You that's know, crazy. They, that's that's they, crazy to me. That's, that's, that's how most people operate. And you got to think about like, let's say cities like New York. If you think about most New Yorkers, they're operating in that 10 mile radius. Like they, they, they do everything. The most geographically ignorant people. <laughs> so that's probably such a strong word, but yeah, I mean, I've met people from New York. They're like, where, 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 where in Nebraska at? Is that South? Like they literally <laughs> don't know anything outside of I-95, you know? <laughs> like they know Philly, DC, North Carolina is the South. They know Atlanta, which is like, what, 85. And then they know Miami, L.A., Vegas, Chicago. That's it. Uh, this is true. But understand, like, most people don't go too far from where they live because it's comfortable, right? Yeah. And you can, so do you think about it. Like, for me, when I'm living in a city, I need to live, like, five minutes away from the grocery store. I need to be able to hit Target real quick like within five to ten minutes I need to be able to have a mall within 15 minutes um but I drive right so nothing nothing to live in DC and go to DC go to Maryland go to Virginia but for a lot of people they like yo I don't like if you live in Maryland you don't go to Virginia if you live in DC you don't leave DC <laughs> you don't leave DC yeah. for nothing and that's how they operate so for people like us who have traveled, who have seen something, um, we're the exception, not the rule, right? Yeah. So you're living this life. And, and I'm going to define for those people who are just tapping into life of AK, 
I'm going to define that for you. So for me, um, I was sitting around, I was talking and um, somebody was like, oh, so you had a mini vacay today. And I was like, no, my life's a vacay because I li literally designed a life that I can not have to tap into somebody to ask them for two weeks to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. I can just yeah. do it because if I want to go to the beach today, I just go to the beach. If I want to get on a plane and go wherever, I just do that. And I want people to understand that it's not difficult to live on purpose and to live a life, not to say that you don't have to work because working is relative. And so if you are doing what you love, it tends to feel like it's not work because it's what yeah. you love and mm -hmm. you've created that life for you. So yeah. let's talk about that and talk about how you got, as I know, you have always loved basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to take you to basketball games. So I know yeah. that you're really passionate about it, but let's talk about how you actually got into the business of basketball. You have a whole um, brand around NBA draft junkies and, you know, you get to appear on draft segments and stuff. So talk about that. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to give you the shortest answer possible because I could get into being like, an hour long just talking about my journey but yes I always loved basketball I always knew there was something that I wanted to do of course when I was younger I thought I was gonna make it to the NBA that clearly didn't happen as a player but I guess in the sense that I kind of have made it to the NBA just a non-traditional route but like most people I graduated from college and I got a job and I got this job I didn't hate it but I knew it wasn't something that I wanted to do and then I left that job for a better paying job. And in this better paying job, I hated it. Like when I say I hated it, I used to break the day down into, again, this is basketball, in the four quarters. So it was like, what was it? Eight to 10 was the first quarter. <laughs> 10 to 12 was the second. Lunch break, halftime. And it, it was just, it was a terrible life. I'm looking at the clock like, dang, only 20 minutes went by. And I was like, I don't have any kids. Like, this is not a way to live. And then I just started, like, buying things that matched what I was making. So I bought, like, a, a new house. I was, like, 25 with a new house. And then I had a nice car. But then I was like, dang, I'm really becoming a slave to, like, my possessions because I don't have the flexibility and freedom to do what I want because I need to pay for this house, which, I mean, I'm 25. I don't have any kids. I don't have anything. I didn't necessarily need a house. So long story short, I got laid off from that job. And when I got laid off, I told myself, like, I mean, the workforce is unstable. If I'm going to be unstable, I might as well do something that I enjoy doing because you can have this job that you think is stable. You can come in one day and not have a job. So if I'm, I might as well just bet on myself. So I went on this long journey of trying to figure out what my niche was in sports. I started like filming. I started like doing some skills training. But one of the things that I knew was, I knew like I wanted to like see the world. And I knew like basketball could be a vehicle to allow me to travel on, on other people's dimes. So after like years and years of trying to figure it out, but that trip to China opened my eyes. Cause that's when I was like, a guy was basically, I knew like, all right, long as I can know how to film and create content, I can travel the world for free and not have to pay a single penny because, and this is in like the early, not early 2000s, but I want to say like 2012, 2013, when not everybody was creating video content and stuff like that on YouTube. So I knew like, okay, all right, there's a group that's going to this country. Hey, do you guys want somebody to come and film it? And they're like, yeah, but we can't pay you. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll figure out how I'm going to survive to pay my rent when I get home later on. But a week in Germany, a week in Europe, yeah, I'm going to do that. It would have cost me X amount of dollars to do it on my own dime anyway. So I just found a niche of being able to combine you know, three of the things I love, which is creating content, basketball and traveling. I just was able to find a way to combine them all. And um, the last few years, everything has like really, really come together. Now, I'm, I mean, there was some hard times there too. I mean, I've been evicted. I didn't lost everything in the process. But like you say, life's a vacay. When you're like doing your own thing, when you're doing what you love, there's like really no cap 
to what you can make. And I mean, the experiences are worth more than than money. And like you said, I, I know, like I color outside the lines. I know I could not live in a world where I'm like applying for vacation or knowing like I used all my vacation up in June and I have none left for the rest of the year. Like that thought process just terrifies me. <laughs> Which brings me to my next question. Um, and we, you kind of talked about fear a little bit earlier with going to China. But let's talk about fear because a lot of people don't pursue their dreams because yeah. of fear. Mm -hmm. And fear is just the false evidence um, appearing real, right? So it's, it's like we've made up all of these thoughts of what it's going to be like. Um, and for instance, I've started 50,000 businesses and, you know, I'm chasing that dream. And sometimes you get to the point where you're like, yo, I'm not even going to do the next thing because I already know what's going to happen, but you don't, right? So you yeah. have to really get out your own way. You have to let go of what people are saying. You have to let go of what you think because you've already created a narrative around something and you have to just do it anyways. So talk about like the moment where you were like, okay, I'm going to quit or you know, I'm laid off. I'm going to go ahead and pursue something I love. But all the things that came up in your mind, wh where were you at? What it was what weird, man. Like? <laughs> it was it was you know it was weird. Like, I I I didn't fear. Like, I, I'll be honest, I didn't fear. I, I want to say maybe the last time I really feared something was that first time I went to China. That's why I say it was life changing because I remember flying once from Dallas to Atlanta, and I think like this is a long flight. <laughs> I can't. But once I was able to master that trip. I, I, I mean, it may sound weird, but fear is not something that I struggle with, right? Because I just, I, I just don't struggle with it. If there is one thing that I do fear, it is not maximizing my time on this earth. I don't ever want to be someone that's like, man, I wish I would have did this, or I, I wasted my time on this. I, I didn't live. Like, God forbid, if I die tomorrow, the thing that people are going to say about me consistently is, he lived, you know, he lived his life. He got to do things. And so, you know, I, I'm blessed in that sense that I don't have fear. I don't suffer from like anxiety. I don't struggle with like confidence. And so I understand that, like, I mean, I understand like you're going to fail. You're, you're going to mess up. You can't be afraid to fail. And if you're always playing it safe and, and scared of what's going to happen, then you're never going to do anything. You're just going to stay put. So, um, no, I just, I don't know. I mean, I just think I'm kind of weird. Like, I absolutely love the challenge of going to a different country and trying to figure my way around. And I have a little one on the way, and I want him to be fearless. And, and as far as, like, traveling, and, and you can probably relate to this more than anyone. So, you know, like, if you're traveling in a different country, right? you don't, you see other cultures, especially women from other cultures, they'll travel by themselves. But I feel like we as Black people have put so much fear in our Black women that not everybody's like you. You are like way out on the deep end. Like you, <laughs> you way, way out there. I don't know. <laughs> but, no, but there's so many people that won't travel. They won't do anything that they want to do because they're waiting on someone to lead the way. And I think as the as we get older, it's going to be hard to find someone whose schedule aligns with yours, who can get off the same time, whose kids, and now you just didn't do anything. And I, I want people to like, not fear, like just maximize your life. Like life is really a vacation. I mean, that's why I love the <laughs> title of, 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 because it really makes sense. And I know like I can relate to it and feel it because I mean, I don't know the difference between Monday and Friday and Saturday. I, I'm not waking up on Monday like, dang, it's Monday. And I'm not like looking forward to Friday at five o'clock because life is really a vacation for right. me. And it's, it's like a, a good feeling. And I think it can be attainable for other people, but they just have to get past the fear. And, and what if? I mean, I'm sure you've had situations where 
you know, it didn't work out. And I have a saying, uh, maybe I should like patent it or copyright it, but I always say like, it's, it's faith when it works and it's stupidity <laughs> when it doesn't. There's like a very thin line between faith and stupidity. And you just can't be afraid to fall on either side of it. Right. And I, you know, I see people often travel in packs or they, you know, they can't go anywhere unless it's a group travel. And I've never been that person. Even when I was traveling within the United States, I would get my car. And That's why I said you on the, got, you on the deep end. Car, he just drives because I had, I could think um, I had time to myself and I'm an introvert, which yeah, I was going to say, I always remember you like moving solo unless you came and picked me up and took me somewhere. <laughs> but for the most part, I, that's the thing I do remember was that you, you move solo. And I remember you went away to school, which I didn't know a lot of people that did that when you went away to, to Granville. I don't know a lot of people that left the comfort zone. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, 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 you're way out on, 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 on the deep end. I think I'm way out on the deep end. I just, I definitely. Um, You've been to more and, countries than people have been to cities in the states. So to me, that's way out on the deep end. If you compare you to the average woman, I'm definitely not average. <laughs> exactly. So that's. And I'm okay with that. I don't even want to be average. Um, but yeah, and 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 I guess because I don't see it because all my friends, like I'm probably like the low man on the total pole when you talk about like numbers of places that people have gone I got a friend that I'm with often and she's been to almost 100 places and it's like 100 countries and I some people don't even know that there are 100 countries it's just like yeah, I think it's not like yeah it's not I mean if I'm not mistaken it's like 184 or something like that right or? yeah so, so that's like ha over half of the country yeah. in the world like she's been to and I have lots of friends that have been to 40 50 countries and I'm like you surround hey. yourself with though I mean but again like you know they say like you surround yourself with what's the say you don't want to be the smartest person in the room you don't right. want to be the so again you're, you're comparing yourself to like extreme outliers <laughs> you know what I'm saying I'm like but I, I but you know what <laughs> but I, I think I told you this before but when you went to Korea you're like the first person I know that like wasn't in like the military or something like that that moved abroad so you inspired me when you did it because I'm like wow that's a, this is a single woman that's like moved into a totally totally different culture and you made it look so easy while I know people but somebody has a church and I remember once and this is kind of a funny story this lady <laughs> hopefully maybe she's listening but I'm not gonna say her name she went up to the front of the church and she went for prayer and it looked like someone had just passed away it looked like such a sad situation I'm thinking you know maybe she got diagnosed with something she goes for prayer coming to find out she needed prayer because her job transferred her to Dallas <laughs> you know what I'm saying like <laughs> she was absolutely terrified of leaving Omaha terrified and so on, that's on one end of the spectrum and then I look at you on I don't know was it my space back then maybe it was Facebook you're in like Korea and you make it look like it was so easy and I'm like if I'm going to lean towards somebody that I want to be like it's that fearless person and I mean as a single woman you've you've accomplished a whole lot so you've inspired me well thank you um I'm glad that I'm inspiring somebody because some days I'm like yo what did I sign up for this like I came into the world and I signed up for this but literally no, you know you inspire people. I, yeah I mean I'm excited about the fact that if you know I tell people all the time if I die tomorrow I'm good like have I done everything I wanted to do absolutely not but I've done the things that I felt like I wanted to do in the yeah. sense of like, if I had the means or if I had the thought, I just did it because if I think too long, it's not going to get done. And so mm -hmm. I just do it. And going to Korea, like literally changed my life 
I, and I, I tell people this story because people act like, and, and I, I know I'm different in the sense that I know I can manifest anything I want in life. And literally I sat on the, I was living in Charlotte at the time and I sat on the couch and I went to sleep and I was just tired because I had been laid off. And I think I had got laid off like maybe eight months prior to that. And for that time, I kind of like tried to figure out life. I got some certifications. I did all this other stuff. And then I'm sitting on my couch and I'm just tired. And I'm like, yo, I want to see the world. And I literally went to sleep, woke up. And then I was checking my emails and I had this email from a recruiter. It was like, hey, we saw your resume. We thought you would be a great fit to come teach in Korea. And I looked at it and I just thought to myself, what do I know about Korea? And the only thing I knew at that time about Korea is that there was the Olympics in Korea and that, um, that MASH, because I used to watch MASH as a little girl. So I was like, yo, it was about the Korean War. So that's all I know. But I started looking at different stuff and I started looking at Seoul and I was like, yo, this looks good. Like, yeah, but who does this? And I just deleted it because I didn't think it was, it, it wasn't that I didn't think it was real. I just was like, who does this? It's weird. Like who just gives, who sends somebody a job offer in Korea? And then I had to think about it. You just asked, could you see the world? Like you literally went to sleep and prior to you going to sleep, you said, can I see the world? And this comes to you. And because I believe in God, it came back and I feel like God was like knocking on the door like hey I'm trying to get your attention I'm giving this to you but you denied it and literally my girlfriend called me a day later and was like yo sit down I want to tell you about opportunity and I know you're the only crazy person that's gonna do it and I was like what is it and she's like I'm gonna go teach in Japan and so she was like here's the information I applied and I was like whatever and they called me back and when they did my interview they were like you're perfect um but we don't have any more jobs in Japan. Would you go to Korea? I was like, okay, that's twice in two days that somebody is knocking with Korea. Obviously, I'm supposed to go to Korea. And then I just packed my bags and moved. Went, but that's, that's cool. I didn't think about it after that. Just was like, okay, this one's supposed to do. So yeah, and my I have a story kind of similar. So I had I had been to China before. I've been a couple of countries in in Europe. And then uh, I went with my parents to Paris to film. I kind of bartered my way to, to film some stuff. And I tweeted, man, I would love to live overseas. I don't want to visit. I want to like live and like kind of get immersed in, in the culture. I don't want it to be like a, a week trip. I promise you. Five minutes later, I get a text from a basketball agent. He says, are you serious? I said, yeah. He's like, so you would live, like pack up and move to another country. I said, yeah, this was like June 4th or something like that. He says, I got something for you. And um, he, so he offered me a job. He's like, we, we, we signed this player. He's young. He's very immature. He has an opportunity to make life-changing money for his family. But if he doesn't handle it right early on, then he is going to blow it and end up back in the States. He's literally, he's like, he needs a babysitter. He needs someone that's going to make sure that he gets up because there's a time difference that makes sure that he is in the best position to last this rookie year because it's going to be such an adjustment. So I'm like, so you're going to pay me money to be a babysitter? And it's like, yes. So what ended up happening is the guy's team was like, well, we we understand he he's a little bit immature. We understand that he may need somebody, but we've put a support system around him. So your services won't be needed. So then the agent says, well, you know what? I got something better for you. He says, it won't be babysitting, but there's a guy that wants to document his entire season. Would you be open to filming his entire season and maybe just doing like whatever little stuff he needs? If he needs someone to rebound for him. And he's also like, the guy does not like living overseas by himself. And he was like, how much would you want to do that and I came up with a total which is more than I had ever made at the time and they were like done deal no contract next thing I know I get a fight and I'm living in Istanbul Turkey and so it's kind of like sometimes you may say something or you may speak it into existence not really expecting it to happen right away and it can happen and you just got to be ready for it 
And I mean, in your situation, it hit you twice and it was life changing for you. And for me, I, you know, I, I tweeted just thinking I'm just tweeting to whoever's listening, not knowing that it was a life changing opportunity on the other end of that tweet that has, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just impacted my life in so many ways. So when you that's said your story, amazing. I was like, I can relate to that. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think, I think a lot of times people get what they're asking for, but they're not ready. So I, I you know, I used to, I was doing a documentary several years ago and um, a guy was, that was working with me was from LA and he used to always say, you know, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people can't live the life of AK. They can't live on purpose. They can't follow their dreams because they're not ready. So in the one thing- I ask why, like, why can't they? I think everybody can. They can, but, but if but you're your, your not ready, yeah. so like, for instance, with my passport, when they offered me the job, I had a pass. All I had to do was pack my bags and go to the uh, consulate in Atlanta. And I was broke. <laughs> I was broke. I was like, okay, I don't even have enough money to pay my rent next month. But guess what? I don't have to because I'm about to leave this contract and mm -hmm. I got out my lease and I have to pay them and everything just started working out in my favor. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna roll with this. I went, I had enough money to get to Atlanta, got my consulate, I went, got my consulate interview, did it. They got my stamp. Um, and then two weeks later, I was in Korea and it just all started to work out. But if I didn't have a passport and literally yeah. my aunt had told me five years prior, so it's like, get your passport. If you get your passport, I'll take you. I don't know. She promised something. And I just did it. And I often think about like, even people in my family, they haven't done things and people always like try to compare. And I'm like, there's no comparison. I have always been of the mindset that even if you promised me something like she promised me to take me somewhere that never happened, I still win because I'm ready. I'm ready mm -hmm. for that opportunity when it comes. I don't have to go fill out no application, wait, you know, like even people who can't travel right now, they can't travel because the um, passport office is backed up, backed up yeah. and now you gotta wait but you had this dream to go somewhere but you wasn't prepared when you should start preparing for where you're going even if it doesn't look like it's coming you just gotta start thinking all right what's the next step the next step is if somebody offers me something and whatever I have x amount of time to get ready for that and yeah. I'm I'm gone and That's I don't have true. to question it. And even like, you you know, when we're going to talk about you're about to become a father, I just became a mother. And somebody said to me, um, oh, so you, your whole life is going to change. Okay, my life did change. So when I got ready to come to Mexico, they were like, you're going to go to Mexico with a baby? Yeah. They were yeah. like, how? I'm going to get on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> but, your, but your mind is your mind operates totally different. And I mean, I can understand it. But the average person is not going to understand. I totally get where you're coming from, but you're fearless. <laughs> so most people can't relate to that. But like you said about getting ready, you know, it, it's funny you said that because I wasn't ready that time when the guy asked me to go to China because my I didn't have a passport. Right. Because I thought like, I knew I wanted to do it, but it, it, it seemed like I, could, I couldn't reach out and grab it. But when he told me that, that like changed me in a sense because it was like, you always have to be ready for any opportunity. And now I've applied it to everything. Like, for example, if ESPN called me tomorrow and was just like, hey, we want you to come on TV for five days talking about the draft. Well, I'm prepared. Why? Because when I lived in China, suits were cheap. I went and got me <laughs> like seven suits custom made. I haven't even worn all of them, but I know like I'm ready for any opportunity because I always want to be prepared in advance. So when you said that, it really, I related to it because like the saying says, if you're ready, you don't have to get ready. Right. And so even like having a child changes everything 
But I read, I think it was a post that you put on Facebook yesterday, um, just being grateful for your wife. So you just recently got married. Congratulations yep. again. Thank you. Um, then, like shortly after getting married, you know, you have a baby on the way. And so congratulations on that as well. Um, it is a lot, a life changing experience. However, one of the things I love is that, you know, when you are thanking your wife and putting it out there about all the things that have transpired since you um, getting married and the plan that you had in place and being able to travel and live abroad and then she getting pregnant pregnant and then you having to alter that plan a little and just having a person that um understands the assignment so to speak we're just gonna talk mm -hmm. about it like that um that's extremely important too because I think oftentimes people especially people who are in relationships if the person there in the relationship doesn't understand the assignment and isn't bought in, then it becomes a conflict. And so oftentimes people have to choose like spouses or relationships or family over, do I follow my dreams? Um, let's talk about the importance of that. And mm. since you are newly wed and you are following your dream, how, you, you talked about it yesterday, it wasn't that difficult, but how did you explain, you know, we're going to separate and I'm going to do this. And how do we, you know, how do we make this compromise um, to the altered plan? Well, honestly, it wasn't a compromise. It, it wasn't like, it was a discussion. We had to like barter something. She knew the opportunity that I had in front of me in, in Europe to to scout and to really really separate myself as this black man that knows who the top prospects are in Serbia or Italy or Spain and so she she knew and then once um, we went to a doctor in Barcelona and then um and the plan was to live in a different country every month and so which on, on one hand it sounds like very extravagant and rich but it's it's not I mean you just get an Airbnb and uh, and make it happen. It, but it it sounds on the outside looking in like you just got to have a ridiculous amount of money, which is not is not the case. And so um, Barcelona did get a little bit expensive compared to other parts of of Europe. And so we went to Athens, and then from Athens, she just decided, which makes the most sense, that she wanted to have a doctor in the states since the baby was going to be born in the states, and then she had the monthly appointments to just do it in the states. And so, and then she was struggling with the time difference because she, she has a job that she works remote, but she still had to work on U.S. time. So she was working from like 3 p.m. to 11 or 12. So that kind of made it difficult to where she didn't get the opportunity to fully embrace living overseas because if she wanted to do any exploring, she had to do it before like two o'clock. So um, it just kind of makes sense for her to go and just thankfully, it wasn't like anything like I need to go with her. But she knows how important it was for me to be a father. And I decided, like, look, I'll go home. I'll I'll take the punishment on my body, which has been tough to spend three weeks in Europe. And I come home once a month every for a week for the doctor's appointments because I, I definitely didn't want to miss those. But, you know, like. It would have been tough if she was working like against me. Like my dad has this saying, it's like riding a bike and you're a couple. When you on a turn, you both have to lean the same way. If one person's leaning the other way and another person isn't leaning, then you're going to be messed up. So, and when I made that post, I just wanted to, I didn't think it was going to have the impact that it did. <laughs> I mean, but I just want to, to let people know whether it was like uh, mostly like if you have a goal or dream that you want to accomplish and it's important for you to have someone that is supportive because I know so many people that want to do different things, but their spouse isn't supportive. And at least in my world, watching basketball all day may sound like a hobby. And like, I even told my mom, I was, my mom's like, y'all don't need to be apart. But I was like, mom, if I were in the military and we were apart, nobody would question it. 
because people respect it as a government job. But I'm like, but because I have total freedom and I'm doing what I like or love and I'm watching basketball, it doesn't get the same respect as someone telling me, no, you got to be a part. And so after I said that, it, it kind of makes sense to her. But I mean, I'm sure like, anybody that travels, I think you have to have someone that has the same interests because, I mean, I imagine like if I love to travel and my wife didn't like to travel, then I'm going to start resenting her because I can't do what I want to do because I'm, you know, trying to, I'm being like held back because we have such a different mindset. So that was important. I mean, my wife hadn't traveled a lot before we met, but she was open and willing and, um, you know, like if I say, hey, man, we, we move into Zimbabwe tomorrow, I think she would be like, uh, OK, all right, well, let, let's let's go ahead and do it. And, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But I think for as a man to have that type of trust, you, you can't like be doing something. Your woman has to trust trust your judgment. Right. <laughs> you can't like have been evicted and then y'all in the poorhouse and then now <laughs> now she don't trust you, you to leave so right and that's important because I know many uh families that have gotten separated because you know they weren't on the same page yep. and <clears throat> it is difficult especially when you're talking about following your dreams I mean even your father you know your mother was a trooper because you know for for him to walk in faith and to do the thing that he wanted to do, she had to like go with it. Yeah. And if you have somebody that's like, no, nah, I, I don't, I don't believe that, or I don't trust that, or it's gonna be tough. I don't see the vision, then it's difficult because it's like fighting yourself. Like if you're yeah. constantly trying to convince yourself to do something that it, it's not ready to do. And so yeah. it, it, it becomes a struggle. I have friends that are going through that. I have so many friends and I'm so thankful that, and you can probably relate to this, but I'm so thankful that everything kind of happened to me. The family thing happened late in life. So I was able to accomplish things solo. I was able to make mistakes and fail where it only impacted me. Like I had a friend, he made a saying, he was like, yeah, man, you, uh, if you eat McDonald's tonight, you fed your family. <laughs> he said, there's nobody else that is depending on you. So um, I have friends that are, I mean, I'm, I'm 42. I have friends that are my age. They're trying to figure out like, man, what do I, I want to do this in life? But now they've accumulated so many things. They have a, a mortgage, they have cars, they have insurance, they have kids that are teenagers and they can't take a step back to go forward because, and I'm not like bashing women, but their wives don't want to come out the comfort zone. They don't believe that this man's dream or this man's vision is going to pay off in the long run. They just want to stay comfortable where they're at. And so, I mean, a lot of guys are just in these weird situations where they really believe in themselves, but they don't have the same support at home. And I'm sure it happens for women too, because I, I know a lot of women sacrifice their goals or, or, or their dreams when, when they're a mother. And I've had friends tell me their kids grew up and now they're just like, I want to do this. <laughs> but even traveling, for example, even traveling. And I don't want to like bash black men, but I've met so many women that said they want to travel, but their husbands only want to go to Miami in Vegas. <laughs> right. Or not leave North America. <laughs> and their mind, they want to do so many different things, but um, they're just not on the same page. So I, I think being on the same page is so important. Definitely. It makes life a lot easier. And if there are people out here that want to start businesses, a lot of times, if you're in a relationship, the deterrent is how you going to make money. We you know, especially you talking about lifestyles. If you created a lifestyle where, you know, you got a mortgage, you have a car note, you have tuition, you have food, you have all these different commodities that you brought into your life. And now you're talking about, okay, I want to go do something that I feel like is part of who I am. And now I can't do it because I have all these things that are holding me back. It's difficult. Um, yeah. 
And I don't want to resent somebody. Like, I think that's the thing in relationships. You could resent somebody because you may feel like, well, if I didn't have this, then I would be doing this. And I think that would be a hard life to live because the person that you're resenting may not have been the reason you didn't do it. You're just creating somebody has to take the blame. Right. And that's, that's sad too. So let's yeah. switch it up a little. Let's talk about freedom. <laughs> so um, what does freedom mean to you? To me, freedom means as long as I have the money in my bank account, I can do whatever I want to do. I don't have to check in. I mean, I got to check in with my wife, but <laughs> like, but I don't have to. And it, it, to me, it just all goes back to traveling. Honestly, if if I have the money to go to Fiji tomorrow, I can go. I don't have to apply for it or see if somebody else has these dates booked off. And that that is freedom. Like like I said, a lot of stuff goes back to travel for me. But freedom is is when you can do what you want to do. And and I mean, of course, you got to work, but you're doing things on your own terms. So how does your business and the work that you do create freedom for you? Uh, I mean, and that was one of the reasons why I fell in love with it because, um, you know, I mean, I'm watching basketball. That's what I in- enjoy doing. I'm not spending eight hours a day or 40 hours a week just working to make ends meet. So that is freedom in itself. Um, but it allows me to, because I'm independent, I can pick my own schedule. I can say, all right, I'm going to spend this amount of time in this country because I'm going to watch these guys. And then from there, okay, I, I, I spent too much money here. I'm going to go to Istanbul where the exchange rate is like 14 Turkish lira. It's only one US dollar. I go stay in Istanbul for a while. And then that gives me the freedom to fly out because they have a major airport. But it, like I said, that is freedom to me of being able to do things on my own terms. That's what's up. So if you can leave the listeners with a nugget to help them encourage or help them be encouraged to do what they want to do and live a life of vacay, what would that be? Uh, believe in yourself. Believe in whatever you, no matter how crazy it sounds. If I have this goal of, I want to visit all seven continents, right? Somehow, some way, I'm going to figure it out. You only have two left. I only got two left, Antarctica <laughs> and, and South America, which is one of the easy to get to. But um, yeah, just believe in it. And even when you start to have like that doubt, just keep believing and, um, and don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't think worst case scenario. Don't be so risk averse because if you're really risk averse then i mean you you you're just not going to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish because you're always going to be thinking about worst case scenario i concur i mean i, I think fear stops a lot of people um if they start the dream yeah they start thinking about all the things of what ifs um what somebody else is going to think. And you just really have to be willing to bet on yourself, you know, because yeah. the bet, like you have one life. And um, like, even in my closing, I always talk about, you know, one life and die empty. Um, I don't want to have a verse, a, a course, a, a, a word. I don't have none of that left. I want to die completely empty. And I've done everything that I wanted to do. I want to leave Earth done, <laughs> complete. Yeah. And I think um, oftentimes so many people die just full of everything. They they haven't they haven't even thought about the the things that they can accomplish because they have all these limitations. A lot of it's self imposed. So yeah. that's. That's it. Um, so how can people find you or at least look at your work? Yeah. So I have a, I mean, if you're into basketball, I have a podcast. It's, it's on NBA Big Board. I have a newsletter that comes out on NBABigBoard.com. 
my Instagram is R Barlow. And my Instagram is not necessarily like a business page. It's like my personal page for like my travels. And I'm sure the next few months, you're going to see a lot of baby stuff on there. But it is R-B-A-R-L-O-W-E. And then on Twitter, you can find me at Barlow, B-A-R-L-O-W-E 500. And on Facebook, just my name, R-A-F-A-E-L-B-A-R-L-O-W-E. Well, I just want to thank you. Congratulations again on the being a newlywed. Congratulations on the baby coming. Um, it is going to be life changing, but I'm sure that you will make it so amazing. And you'll have two other people traveling with you real soon. So yeah. keep up the good way, work. Yeah. I'm always proud to read your posts they're insightful and I'm just proud to know you because you've yeah. done some amazing things and you're living your dream and that's yeah. really why I designed this whole podcast to talk to more people like you who have inspired me to keep going who I know have wonderful stories that other people need to hear because so many people I mean it's, it's a young man somewhere who can't play basketball for whatever reason he's too short he's too fat he's you know whatever and he's trying to figure out how he can do it and there's so many avenues I was talking to a young lady earlier who um, does social work and who would have thought you can do traveling social work um, yeah. but so many people think social work is you know is limited to this but there are so many things that are in different industries that branch beyond the comforts of what is traditional and it's just really you about being creative about how you can do it and so yeah. you've done that and thank you for that well I wanted to say something that to you that um it's I can relate to it so I had always wanted to do a podcast but then I was like um uh, I'll do it next week I'll do it next week I'll do it whenever and then this guy invited me to be on his podcast because he just needed some content and then I was asking him like how hard is it to get started he's like no it's really simple you do this this and that so during the pandemic I just did a podcast every single day just talking and then like if I were on you know, NBA draft stuff. And I gave my opinion and somebody would reach out to me like, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. And I would just say, Hey, you want to come on my podcast and, and share your thing? So either some people would be like, no, but then some people came on. And what I did not know was that it caught the attention of a guy in Australia. And then he invited me to be on his podcast and then his boss heard it. And then they reached out to me about putting my podcast on their platform. And then when I put my podcast on their platform, it became paid. I had ad reads and all that stuff. And then from there, that led to the opportunity to me for me to be on TV. And then from there, that led to the opportunity for me to take over the newsletter, which is like a subscription-based newsletter, and I'm getting paid for that. So I said all that to say this. For when you started your podcast, you never know like who is listening and what person may put you on their platform because you're doing this out of the love for traveling and, and to hear stories, but talk about like not being fearful. Like somebody, somebody wants to start a podcast, but they're scared. Like, well, who's going to listen to me? So props to you for having the idea in your head going forward with it. Cause we all have ideas that we just kind of sat on. So when you like made this thing happen and it's super professional, I got like the calendar, I got the zoom link, <laughs> this podcast, I think, is going to be really, really good because most podcasts are just like, hey, man, all right, at seven o'clock, are you ready to do that? I'm going to send you a link at 6.59. Yours is professional. I got an email. I got like the alerts. It gave me like a way to be prepared for it. And I said I had to say this again, shout out to you for like making your vision come to life. And if you ever need me on again, let me know. I'm on any time. And uh, again, thank you for doing, you know, this vision that you had and making it come to life. So people always get props from me for starting something and not just, you know, letting it just fade away. So I wanted to drop that nugget for you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been, a, I, I had an idea last year to do a podcast, but I don't know. Somehow I felt like I needed a host, like like a wingman or somebody, like a hype person. <laughs> and I was like, 
you know what? I have a big enough personality. I can make a, a show run. And I've done interviews. I've, you know, uh, did blogs. I did interviews for blogs. And I had a blog spot <laughs> podcast like 50 years ago. And so I learned some of these things. And so now, now that I'm reinventing myself in a different place and space, um, I'm just taking what I learned a long time ago and putting it into action differently. And so, and then that's another thing for people. That's a nugget is that, you know, sometimes things don't work out and you think, dang, you know, I put all this energy in it or I thought it was just like the, the next big idea. And then you go through it and it doesn't actually become what you think. It doesn't mean that you did work that is null and void. It just means that you weren't ready. And it was preparing for something bigger. This is gonna work. I'm 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 confident in it. I'm not even worried about it. I because I sat here and started thinking about the people I know. I was like, well, hold up. I, I've been in circles. So it's just really about taking everything I've learned in the past and reapplying it and making it work in a different way. And yeah. it doesn't, it, it's it's my time. So <laughs> and the world wants content. The world wants content. People need stuff to listen to in the car on their way to work or on the way in the train. And so I think content creation is a way to once if you get it right. I mean, there's no limit to how much money you can make in, in content. So you're in the right path. If I can do anything to help, let me know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, give it up to my boy, Rafael Barlow. Um, you, he already gave you all his handles. Reach out to him. If you are dreaming about how to do what you love to do and you don't think that there's a way, there's always a way. Just make it. All right, y'all. Peace. How do I stop this? Oh. You have been listening to Life's a VK podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. Every day you have a choice. So choose yourself and never allow your circumstances to dictate the life you live. Whatever you don't like, you can change. Remember, nothing happens overnight, but know that when you set goals and take inspired action, whatever you desire can come in perfect timing. Never give up on creating the life you deserve. Don't anticipate your next vacation when you could be living a whole life on vacation. Until next time, I'm your host, Cha Jones. Please remember to like and share this podcast so that others can be inspired. Peace.